fight. It's still got the bonus HP though, right? So you still have that extra... Yeah, but are you really going to rely on running into a team fight, saving your ulti, eating a chen creep? If you run into a sentry, you're just dead because you don't have death pact running. Yeah, it's like, true. It's, it's really dangerous. I don't, I don't think you think of clinks that way. I personally do not consider the hero a chen counter at all anymore. I don't think it works that way. Clinks is even not the strongest laner, and Chen is a lane dominator, so he can uh, counter Clinks that way. Um, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. I don't think that was the way to go. They're gonna get Dragon Knight. This is actually vintage Liquid stuff. This is such a strong five-man push with Keeper of the Light Eggs. Yeah, they're gonna hit a timing when Wind Strikes team fight just doesn't stand a chance. Wind Strike have to skirmish, they have to make chaos around the map, they have to find kills. If this if Wind Strike play as slowly as they did last game, they're not gonna win this game. And then you still got that other question mark, right? Like where does the Wraith King even go? Like is this does this even belong to mind control? Like, yeah, they we, don't even we'll see. they don't have to do this. The Visage is the one that's banned out by Wind Strike. Yep. They could have plenty of options here. Um like you said, the Wraith King could both be a three and a one. The Dragon Knight can technically also be both a three, one, and two. You don't have to put it mid. Yep. If uh, if you don't like the matchup he has, I think he's pretty good against Clinks just because of the extra armor and regen. Clinks generally wins his lane mid by harassing the opponent away with searing arrows, but Dragon Knight can hold his own with some regen and the passive for sure. So maybe Windstrike will be looking for a different counter pick and put Clinks in a side lane. But do you want to put Clinks in any of these side lanes? Do you want to play against Chen in a side lane or do you want to play against Caudal in a side lane with Clinks? Both those lanes suck, man. Like that's <laughs> that's really bad matchups. Unless you got the vision to see him like channeling the Illuminate. It's, yeah. Yeah. You're Night Soccer will give you that time. during daytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, hey, considering Night Soccer was the hero I know you best for, Mr. Night Stalker Yule Scepter. Yeah, it's a long time ago. It was. I loved Night Stalker. I love the hero. I think it's great. It's just right now it's not great. Mm. But the, the hero itself through the years has actually been a really good pick, and I think it's very entertaining to play and watch, but uh, he's definitely not in his best place right now. I haven't played the hero for quite a long time. I just don't I don't go into a game and look at the picks and I'm like, yeah, I really want to play Night Stalker, because I just feel like I'm not, I'm not really going to... I'm going to dream back to the days when it was good <laughs> when I play it. it. It's just, it's not a hot hero right now. But who knows? Maybe when Strike can make it look good. I'm... Um, as always, I'm always ready to be surprised. It's great to see surprising and different stuff, so... The final ban from Team Liquid now. They're probably thinking about the... They're thinking about a Venomancer, it seems. Hmm. Not a hero you would think would, uh, would threaten Team Liquid that much. Like they got so much sustain. Well, he's uh, pretty good at just walling up and defending the towers. And that's something they definitely rely on in this lineup, is going to push towers. So they're worried about the full defense of, of Windstrike. Yeah, the, a lot of vision advantage too, when you have both the Venom Night Stalker Venom. and the Venomancer. You could get a lot of vision at night time that could be difficult to deal Windstrike. with. I can I can see where they're coming from here. Yes, and that's a warrior. We're going into hunt mode. Yep. Classic Batumpaman hero. They want this hero against Night Stalker. They're assuming Night Stalker's a core, and they probably feel like if we force Night Stalker onto support, he's going to be worthless. So that's a win in itself. Night Stalker has two pretty bad side lanes now. One is going to have an Ursa, and the other one's going to have a Caudal Wraith King. That is not easy at all. You don't harass anything in this. No. Five seconds remaining. In any lane, you think you have an advantage. The Chen will just rotate over. They can just be. Real aggressive. So, Windstrike needs something that just hits harder and, and faster and earlier. I wonder if... I think... I'm pretty sure they'll put Sion on Clinks and they'll last pick a hero for Iceberg. I think it's going to be a safe lane Clinks regardless. It's not an Iceberg hero. Just get him something like an Invoker and just say, Hey, Iceberg, just do what you do best, alright? Crosswax is not bad this game. Um, I think they have the damage to go with it. And there ends up. Okay, <laughs> he was one of the 12 or 13 heroes that hadn't been played yet. They just picked two heroes that haven't been played all TI yet. Yeah. In the same game. Yeah. Widely considered very weak. I think they may be trying to f complete their compendiums. Uh, <laughs> well, there is logic to this OD pick because it actually has three good matchups. None of these heroes want to go against OD mid. It's really tricky playing Dragon Knight against. I think Ursa loses that lane hard as well, and definitely Wraith King doesn't stand a chance. So. The logic is sound from a laning perspective, but from a teamfight perspective, Windstrike's lineup is really lacking. They don't have much in the way of pushing towers. They only have Trance. 
Uh, Clinks is like, I don't really count it as a pusher because it's very situational when you can really hit towers. Mm -hmm. um, in team fights, they have like no AoE lockdown, no control. And well, they're going to be five manning this liquid squad at some point, and this OD better have some items or nobody's going to die. That's pretty much my prediction for this yeah. team fight. Even, even if they five man, like what happens if they get hit by a blinding light? Like, and the amount of damage they do is going to be repaired by Hand of Ghost, going to be repaired by the lifesteal. Or this, the, or the just the straight up regeneration that comes along with miracle. I'm not going to count GH into this. I doubt if you'll even look at building into an Akadim scepter I think against the Night Stalker. I think he's going to go force Axe regardless. Something that Liquid is really good at is playing timings. And what you can do when it's daytime is you go somewhere, you start a fight, Night Stalker has to darkness, and you disengage. And when that darkness ends, you know you have this window, this span of one window. Uh, one window, one minute, <laughs> whatever it is, depending on the ulti a, a level. window of time. Yes. yes. The span of one window. No. <laughs> Against Night Stalker, depending on his level, where you are just way superior. I, it, it kind of doesn't really matter to me what items Windstrike build. If they're not far ahead when daytime comes, mm -hmm. they don't stand a chance against a cod, a cod lags outside of the darkness. Okay, they're good. Uh, we'll see about that. Alright, so... By the way, probably a surprise to many people, this is not uh, Matumba Man Ursa. It's mind control playing it, Ursa. It I, is a mind control Ursa. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. It's Matumba Man on the Wraith King yep. and Miracles on the DK. Miracle Dragon Knight. Alright. Oh. Very interesting. You know, it's actually something that um, Mind Control had been to me in Shanghai. It's like, I, I hate the offlane because it gets so boring. I play the same heroes every time, and this is just the way it is. I always like so something that makes life interesting <laughs> so I don't have to fall asleep. And uh, this, this will make things interesting for him. Kind of yeah. makes him a little bit of a throwaway hero too, right? Like, because you, you put the Ursa, you... I don't know if he, do you, you still give him the Aegis Seed model because Wraith King's got his own go, got his own ank. But Mind Control can just jump in, be aggressive. If he dies, okay, that's cool. But it'll take so much with the Enrage. Yeah. The battle Definitely begins. not gonna die during Enrage. It's a it's a one it's a two two rune. Yep, two for two. And this will indeed be the Wraith King, Keeper of the Light Lane. This is a strong lane. Wraith King's stun is two seconds into two seconds of slow, so Illuminate will always connect on it. And once Keeper of the Light is level 2 and has the Chakra, it lowers the cooldown of the Wraith King stun by 3 seconds level 1, and the cooldown of that spell is 11. Mm -hmm. So you very quickly, when these heroes just get a couple of levels each, so you get like maybe level 3 Wraithfire Blasts and level 2 or 3 on the Illuminate, or sorry, Chakra Magic, you can chain the stuns. Mm. And you put some skeletons in the mix, it ain't easy. GH is going to have to play the uh, inside the Fog of War though. With the blind zone on no fear, GH goes down to negative two armor, and then they just searing arrow up. This is not a fun lane for him to be in. So you talk about getting to level two, but Matumba and GH are getting forced out of the lane. So aren't very willing to be over aggressive about things. And then Miracle having to play against Iceberg. This will also be an interesting matchup for the DK to try and tank because Iceberg just runs at him. He's using uh, a zero one one, so. Hope he triggers up the essence and then just keeps beating into Miracle. Most likely Iceberg will go 1-3, one, one, I think. And he will keep Astral level 1 in this game and look to completely dominate Miracle by getting levels in Arcane Orb. Uh, but you don't have the mana to sustain the orb in the beginning. So probably there's one value point in Astral and then straight into Essence Aura Focus. Now he's really just trying to make sure that Miracle is not part of this lane. That's a very bad lane matchup for Dragon Knight. It's one of the worst. Miracle's not doing too bad though. It's 4 0. Got his level 3. But he will clearly lose this lane. No. Until support can move over. Kuro puts the penitence down. Mind control realizes he'll have to cut through the tree lane. Troll trap is out. And that's why they just slow him up. The magic missile. Creep wave along with him. <laughs> Get the breed fire off. Iceberg does no damage at this. Well, not no damage, just very minimal damage to Miracle. And then he has to steal the arcane rune. Just what I've been waiting for. Wait, he's maxing Astro Imprisonment? I, I don't know, man. He I is. don't know if that's the approach to this lane. Oh, oh BS. That's a kill. Yeah, Troll Trap. And it was Penitence again. Exactly the same combination. This time, though, it was successful. So I 
I'm not an OD player myself, and I've barely seen the hero played for months, so it's hard for me to know truly what to do with it. Iceberg has played this hero a lot in the past, so I'm sure he has good, uh, good reasons for doing what he does, but what I do remember for sure is in the past with the old OD, you would max Arcane Orb early together with the Essence Orb and use that to dominate lanes against these melee heroes that just can't fight back without mana. Um, but in this case, he is going 0 2 2, so oh. <laughs> perhaps you just can't sustain mana anymore with this build. I feel like you could, though. With a. Uh, let's say you go 2 1 3, for example. They're looking to kill off GH. He's just going to Illuminate Spam, try and help out Matubman to find the kills. They just probably was actually looking for the jump to start with. But Matubman's taking way too much damage from the searing arrows of Silent. Really nice stutter stepping from Silent. That was. That was beautiful. It's one thing to strafe and just hit heroes, right? But when you perfectly perfectly move between every single attack like that and waste pretty much no time, that's when you know you no you master money. the hero. And now Matumba and GH have to do it the old-fashioned way again. It's 1-1. One, one. On the board, and GH is into the trees. Not battling from the side, not trying to be in, in the way of Nature's Prophet. Who uh, is now TPing out, but hey, look where Nature's Prophet goes. He is the master of the trees. Makes a clearing, and GH is now on the run. This, uh, this, this offlane of Team Liquid just doesn't seem to have the same bite as it did before. Uh, it's definitely not going that well for them. The, the Nature's Prophet is, is countering off the Caudal really nicely. It's a good and in start. the meantime... It's meantime, a good start for the Clinks. In the meantime... In the meantime... This Night Stalker is activated. Hey, yeah, going up to Kuro. It is, it is night time. Oh, Player that's what you meant by mean time. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, what? No, I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, he's activated, so he's ready to rock and roll. Obviously, this lane is tough. The Ursa kill is very difficult, but can at least grab some CS, maybe put some pressure on the Chen if he wants to. I'll see. Um, Miracle really needs to have that. Well, can he complete the soul? Yeah, it's coming on the courier now. I'm like, he he had something else in his quick buy. He had he had magic wand in his quick buy. Like, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Always want to fly on the run. Troll trap, penitence, centaur stomp will be available. But Kuro knows he doesn't have enough damage in mind control. Runes are the priority, and that's exactly what's happening on bottom lane. GH dies, and Ophir TP's down, takes the runes, and Matumba will get absolutely nothing. One more searing arrow will do it, but Nofia's currently burning. Matumba will salve up. He has to run away from the skeleton army of Matumba. That was three runes, I think, for Windstrike. Yep. They're looking yes. good in this early game. This is the first game I've seen of Windstrike where they're clearly a head minute five on net worth. Might have some trouble though. Iceberg just uses imprisonment aggressively against Miracle. They've got Dragon Town plus the dual breath, but they don't have the range available. Hellfire Blast comes off cooldown in one second time, but always when a fly does his own rotation in. So Miracle, he uh, wonders exactly what he wants from this. Nice talk is TP'd over too. So now Liquid, they don't have the numbers. And Matumba, they'll slow him down with the Void. Up the hill, the attack will not miss. So Iceberg will claim that one, turning their attention. Now over towards Miracle. And a boat, the cause of Team Liquid, gonna die within the span of like 30 seconds underneath their own tier one tower. Answer is definitely yes. Imprisonment will finish the job. This is a huge kill, because Miracle tried to stun the Venge and TP out. He tried to be cheeky there, but level 1 stun doesn't last long enough for that play to be possible with the turn rates included. And Windstrike are just dominating them right now. Like, this is... Yeah, they're everywhere. This is very refreshing to see. They are just pressuring all the lanes. This, is, really the, this is the aggressive nature you want to see from Windstrike. And they're forced to do it. They're forced to get up in their face. Kuro will take the top tower. But they do have ways to stall, right? Like you've still got you've still got the uh, the Coddle blast. You've still got Chen Army to do the split push. For sure, but your skirmishing power in this lineup is not that good. So if the lanes go poorly, these night times are going to be very dangerous. Wind Strike have multiple ways of combining their heroes to make kills. Night Stalker with Nature's Prophet, Night Stalker with Venge, Venge with the OD, especially once Arcane Orb starts being leveled up. Venge with Clinks. We've seen how ridiculous damage Clinks can do already with. Just a Searing Arrows, put a Blightstone in the mix and the Minus Armor from Wave of Terror. It's, uh... I dare say we might have a much more interesting game on our hands this time. 
Fantastic vision work as well from Windstrike. That observed what they left behind the mid lane. Saw Kuro's gank attempt onto Iceberg. So Kuro just wasted a good 30 seconds just sitting in the mid lane. Hoping oh for an opportunity God, and keeper him alive. What the hell happened to him? Silent now becomes another target, but Tubman goes after him. Doesn't have the extra life. Iceberg does die in the mid lane eventually. Always want to fly a rotation. He cannot reach it. So as far as missing kills, we're looking good. <laughs> yeah, they brought... They basically killing this OD is the biggest kill on the whole map because they bring Miracle back in the game this way. Chen has some more meaningful to go now. He wants to get new creeps and get ready to push the mid tower, or maybe he's just looking for a bit of XP. Yeah, he has these creeps off bottom lane, Matumba's dead. Yeah. Dude, did you see the Caudal die to Clinks? I did not. Caudal has two armor and six hundred health. He literally got killed by two searing arrows from three quarters health or something. I think like, my control might be dead as well. Non Gratis has got one more hit. <laughs> Would have done the job. And my control. And even TP back to base. He TP'd out to the shrine. He doesn't want to slow down his progression. Kuro is ready to go again on mid. They just keep waiting for Iceberg to use Astral Imprisonment. And then come forward. Troll Trap. One stomp. Two stomp. Uh, Dragon Tail stun. They'll use that instead. And the Illuminate from GH clipping into Always Wanna Fly. Kuro's positioning of the Centaur saw so much of this coming, but he did not see Silent, who could now oh, actually nice use that Death Pact in the middle of this fight to gain that little bit of extra strength to now turn around. My Control does not have Enrage available, and no fear, Sprout is up. He needs one quick control. They'll Sprout Miracle, they'll stun Mind Control. It's a little bit of miss targeting at least, but with the negative armor hitting Mind Control and Miracle do not want to hang around. They've got the Centaur with the Sun available. So a space can be created by this. But Team Liquid are getting out. They're buying time. But Tubberman's farming up on bottom lane. I suppose non is having the same type of thing. We're, we're daytime. And Nice Talk is able to find space to farm. He's level 7 on NS. This is a really good early game for Nice Soccer. He's got the urn. Phase boots. He's currently 4th on the net worth. More net worth than the mid Dragon Knight. That's that's very solid for a non grata right now. Probably oh, jumping in lane. lane. Miracle's able to get the sun up pretty quickly. Sprout will have to go blind up the hill if he's going to get it instantly. But Miracle cuts through. He is so low. Oh, but enough life to get back. Definitely could have been a kill for Windstrike with a better teleport from No Fear. Teleported next to him, so got instant dragon tailed. And then when he gets the sprout off, Miracle just quells out of it. If he TP's behind Miracle and puts a, a sprout up that doesn't surround him, but rather blocks his path. The classic behind the hero sprout. That could have been a kill, but Miracle cool under pressure as oh, always. Sweet. Can't believe the fact that Matumba still doesn't have level six, but silent sentry war gets planted down. No way to really hide. Wrath of Nature bounces through, but with the Illuminant, they have the damage. It's Miracle who claims the kill. Much needed money, they'll finish up his treads. Yeah, strong invasion here from Liquid. They're taking advantage of the daytime. Night Stalker did at least get one bounty rune top. He Took it just in front of the Ursa. That was more less than half a second away from grabbing it. But at the very least for them they got that. Maybe Liquid still. Pull back in a gold lead. They haven't had this since the game began, I think, actually. Uh you are pretty much correct. They had it for a short period of time around the three minute mark. And now they're looking to take this tower. So putting on the team fight pressure, they know that Windstrike's lineup is not good at playing this type of game. Yeah, but here comes they Dark might still be good enough. In through the rear. You already got the courier delivering an extra <laughs> ward visit during the middle of the fight. Start the first stun out, but it's really the vengeful spirit. Always want to fly a bit off a lot more than he can chew. And Non Grata was battling Keeper of the Light, but there was no real follow up. Now Iceberg will arrive. He doesn't have the Eclipse available, and they're still fighting into the Illuminate Blast. So no creep waves really available at all. Instead, it's just, okay, it will be Kuro tying with the Wrath of Nature going through most of Team Liquid. And he'll lose his Chen army. These blasts not really connecting anymore, and inside the darkness, Liquid don't see the targets they want. Miracle will complete his TP out. That seems like a pretty good scenario for Team Liquid. Yeah, they managed to for force a fight at the tower, and the way Windstrike opened that fight didn't really work. They couldn't come together and open on a hero at the same time. Ideally, you want the Night Stalker and Clinks to just find a hero and lay into him, or TP in the Furion behind to get a Sprout that the Clinks can hit in something like this. Uh, but Liquid were playing it fast, and Windstrike were not set up. Prophet jumping in behind the lines. They want to stop GH. Oh, he did. Fantastic combination when you got them together. Prophet can TP in. Sprout get the vision on the uh, Keeper of the Light, who loves to play from the tree lines and just go full defensive. 
Mid lane always want to fly. Oh, yeah, Miracle swap. started up, but now OD comes into the fight. You can swap them back in. Kuro's nearby, trying to send Miracle all the way home. They have the damage dropping. That Sandy's Eclipse to find the kill. And Kuro will have to use his Sentinel to create some more space to survive. And in the meantime, Silent also got a bottom tower. So again, swing the other way. The wind strike looking good again. But Matama Manosa got space up on top. That he did. So. He's still really far behind though. Oh yeah. He is seventh on net worth in this game. He is behind to support Nature's Prophet. Speaking of Prophet. Well, you're starting his TP again. Nongrata goes up towards the uh, skies, comes back down again, and you'll just be there. The lend aid to increase the urn charges. GH is having a rough time, man. He's zero on five. Keeper of the Light's a hero, right? And we were talking about Keeper of the Light and what the weaknesses are. I think this is uh, showcasing what can happen <laughs> to the hero. If you have the right counters, which they have a couple of, it's really hard. He has to go somewhere and cast Illuminate, but jungling is not as appealing anymore. And if you if you start illuminating in the lanes against these kind of heroes, if they see you, you're dead. You just dive and kill him. And now these cores can really do much. I I wonder if we... Oh, okay, they've actually got a three-man smoke up and kill off Matumba. If their timing is right, Windstrike just need to wrap around the high side, oh, which yes. is exactly what they do. They walk the right angle, and Iceberg four stars forward into the imprisonment. They'll surround him. GH's blast will be able to connect onto four heroes, and they look to turn oh, around. Remember, he's got the reincarnation God. with the breeze fire and the Illuminate. Did a lot of damage, and they swap them down. Always want to find ones to stay in the fight. But Tumble will go down. Another Illuminate connects to the Chen army, wrapping around from behind. Windstrike. They thought they were in power, but they were blinded by the light. Five-man Illuminate, five-man Breathe Fire. <laughs> and then another great Illuminate from GH. That was... That looked like Liquid knew exactly what was happening, and they just baited their Wraith King. They responded so quickly. Really good spellcasting and positioning from them, and they get the Roshan as well. That was... Oh, long that was sick. What is he up to? He's bouncing around with Hunter and the Knight around Roshan. He can't do anything more about it. Ursa Aegis. Oh, mind control. Has a blink dagger up. Very willing to fight. See, I was, I was going to say before all this began that mind control feels like he's that non-factor hero at the moment. He's just been sitting, farming, bounces around, but it's like, hmm. Well, now he's top net worth and has an Aegis and yep. a dagger, so. Yep, now he's surely. Good. Now's the time. 15 minutes, there's bounty runes to be claimed. And Windstrike, they have found a target. Yeah. It's your old boy, Keeper of the Light. <laughs> so, so, all right. Look at this. Sure, boom, boom, boom. Oh, Blinding okay. lights. Yes, yeah, created. Wait, what? But then Nongrata comes up. He'll get the range with the Void. No one's going to fly. They are really showing some hatred towards GH. I thought that was going to go faster, actually. I'm surprised. I thought Sound would three or four shot him. Guess it's a uh, three, guess three, three, one. Yeah, yeah I'm, I was just looking at Caudal. I thought oh. maybe he got something, but not really. But it was go faster. Too easy. Free fire burn, no fear, ticks down. Miracle's oh. still on the run, it was the uh, VS Illusion that was chasing him, and that gave they him away position. So into the trees, uh, Miracle. Now that Hunter and the Knight goes down, they'll see him, but... So I think this is a tricky situation to be Night Stalker in, because you need to use Hunter and the Knight to make sure you know where Dragon Knight is, but do you use it then, assuming that he will TP out in the trees that you just ran past, or do you think he'll run the whole way and TP out in the trees to the right? And unfortunately for Nongrata, he guessed wrong. If he would have held his Hunter in the Knight there, that's a 100% kill on Miracle. Mm -hmm. Now they got nothing, and they lose their mid-tier 1. Very quick movement here, Miracle TP to mid. It's daytime! Play a game of nighttime, daytime. Yep, darkness is ready, but this fight is... It, it doesn't look like it's worth taking. It's Iceberg, take. maybe with an Invis rune, we'll consider it. There's four sentries currently on Kuro, and you know he's going to start to place them down. Yep, there's your first one, Iceberg. Staying out of range of that green circle, if you wish to live. They send the Treants in instead, with the Wrath of Nature bouncing through Kuro's army, but it, they tank up most of it. And GH has a very important item now. This is a, an excellent pickup in this game, the Ghost Scepter. Great against Clinks, great against OD. Decent against Night Soccer too. So he, he's probably going to stay alive in the coming fights. And I feel like an overlooked aspect of this Ghost Scepter is the 5 all attributes. Like, people just think about the only the passive, or the active part. But it does have that passive component to it, and those attributes make a difference. Oh, I suppose taking a decent creep wave down the bottom lane, gonna team up with no fears, so Team Liquid, they're just going for the full trade-off. The skeleton army is alive. 
And really forcing hard into that tier 2 tower. Keeper of the Light wants to slow down the push. GH has a level 4 Illuminate. Mind Control, the 4 staff from Iceberg creates a little bit of space away from the Enraged Up Earth. Remember, they don't want to really find Mind Control. He's got the Aegis of the Immortal, so him dying could be for the greater good. As long as they can find an opening, but Iceberg is... He's already tailed it away. Look at the warding on the map from Liquid. Yeah, they have so much vision. They have six wards out right now. They've been holding this for so long. It's a nice pattern. Hang on, you just, you just hang on. I, I, I can draw the line naturally. Here, here. We come down. Connect the dots. Boom, boom. Okay. There Let's we play go. Connect the dots. That's. I'm playing connect the dots. This but, is. But then you've got then you got a random dot. But it's the one that's going to time out. It's a beak. It's a it's a beak. Okay. Welcome to the bird strat. Night stalker going to get killed off. Miracle there. Speaking of birds, he gets his wing is clipped, and now it's daytime. So <laughs> questionable at the best. Liquid are starting to look pretty much in control of this game right now. Yep. The graphs definitely tell the same story. You've still got a lot of strength in the in the wind strike lineup. That's their advantage, the fact that the Klinks is number one in the net worth. He's just completing up now. MKB. Yep. He needs it against the blinding light. Um, we saw before, I as I mentioned at the time, I thought he was going to kill GH faster, but he had a lot of net worth on him that wasn't used, and that went into a demon edge. And now that the damage is there, he will kill him fast. But there's a Ghost Scepter to worry about if he wants to target the Caudal. So probably better off going for other heroes and just, you know... Should you actually just go with Glass Cannon as well? So they get that... Because uh, I remember you talking about Klinks in previous series. And yeah. you're always like, the Klinks just should find a kill, and that wins the fight at the very, very beginning. Like, do you go Glass Cannon in order to achieve that against such a tanky lineup like what Liquid has? Who do you find is the question. Like, yeah. you, you can't really kill Wraith King right away. He has Reincarnation, Urza has Enrage, and Dragon Knight is just innately pretty tanky. I think it's better to itemize to stay in the fight. Uh, so the BKB that we see Sound hovering right now, I think is a solid choice. Top tower has um, although I could also see him going for some sort of a hybrid item. He could turn his... Well, do they have they have the medallion on Nature's Prophet? He's going Crest, because else that could have been a nice item on Clink's here, right? Like, yeah, having the defensive and the aggressive component. But that will be coming out from his buddy. Aegis down. Oh, Kuro's drawing the lines right now. Uh, yeah, I there's, don't know. There's the, they are fighting here, we need to push here, and we control that. Caudal will take care of top. See a great wave. Until Nature's Prophet wants a TP in behind him. But no, he'll go down towards bottom lane. Sprouts up over on Miracle. Support TP's in, in the form of Nograna. Iceberg came in through the Shrine. So they focus on the DK. Spirit Vessel is up, so DK just doesn't have that sustain, that innately tanky sustain you were looking for. And they turn their attention towards Matumbaman. Swap him out, out of the trees, out of all kind of movement, and two heroes from Liquid. Picked off, feeling like they had the space. That was a nice and quick move. So what Windstrike did there was they pressured top and they saw Caudal come up there, start illuminating. They instantly rotate multiple heroes bottom and just get the jump. And they feel they cannot lose this fight at at night time with the with the nice stalker. And they're right. Two great core kills. And they lost nothing for and it. And they're coming for more. Observer and Sentry is down. Nongrata gets revealed and probably is going to ping out the fact that he was seen. But they were coming for the kill because Keeper of the Light went for the rune. Went for the bounty rune underneath the obs. There's a lot of money on Iceberg and nothing in his quick buy. Yeah, I think it's going BKB. Um, there are other choices, obviously. Could go Dagger Pike, but I feel like if he wants the Dagger, he would have bought it already. Oh, top lane, they recalled him. Yep, pulled him in. Trying to push him up. That's the fall. Oh, oh, blinding light just pulls back. No fear. Well, let the laugh. I oh, like the laugh. Narrate that. That post fight, uh -huh. post kill, uh -huh. great laughers has. Oh, Miracles actually got initiation out of now. Shadow Blade completed. He's already purchased up the Mithril Hammer on his way towards a PKB. But they're sitting back in his uh, stash at the moment. Yep. With this PKB on Iceberg, I think you just either when strike have two options. They either tr try to take the fight right now with this peak, or they delay and wait for Clinks to get his too, and then they look for a really big fight. But knowing oh, Windstrike, I think they want to go for it. They're going after Matumbaman, searing arrows. Uh, the timing is a little bit off from Iceberg. Support will be able to arrive from GH. Blinding Light? No. 
His ult is on cooldown for the moment, and that's why Nongrada is thinking of diving in deeper. The timing was great. It Eight was seconds. Ten, yeah, it was just before the uh, the uh, reincarnation would come off cooldown. And if it had, then I think that would have been a pretty pretty bad fight for Windstrike. The way they opened up, they used Astral Imprisonment during Strafe. That's generally a really bad sign, basically anti-synergy there. They got the job done still, because they only need to kill him once. They've got a pretty good grip on the map right now. You look across this, like, all of this right side of the map is owned by Windstrike. They're dealing with the split push of Caudal with their Nature's Prophet, and the mid lane is also across the river now, so they are able to find more opportunities for themselves. Especially when for. all the Vision of Liquid, yeah, becomes pretty pointless. Uh, from that one defensive observer sentry combo. Uh, Roshan, we've got uh, a minute and 45 seconds before he is up. Silent will be sad. He just found a double damage rune, an iceberg. It's made in China. He, uh, these dragons have a very rare spell they use some time. Um, there's a 5% chance that they all cast level 3 Laguna Blade at the same time. Had a feeling that was going to come there. Mm -hmm. Better safe than sorry, right? Yeah. Totally legit reason. Oh, maybe he just wants to have the five, the uh, the lower cooldown time. <laughs> All right. They're pretty happy with their positioning anyway. So even though the BKB has been burnt, Team Liquid were not aware of this. It was out of range of all of their ops. Mind control farming up top. He's got BKB plus in rage. A very difficult target to go on. This one's a little easier. Always want to fly, Team Liquid. Blinding. Whoops, that went the wrong way. Depends how you look at it. I think GH was definitely trying to pull always want to fly into it into a death. But they have to come back again. They really need this keeper of the line to be able to drag people around, but you see the item build from GH. It is no there's no Aconim Scepter. His force is ghost and now he's looking at a halberd. Hmm. The upside to Aghanims is that people obviously concentrate or focus a lot on the Illuminate heal at daytime, but it's really convenient to have constant ulti as well. You should not underestimate the value of Blinding having zero fall. downtime. Yeah. Right now the downtown is uh, downtown. The downtime down, is down. <laughs> is 30 seconds. Last for 70. Or sorry, cooldown 70, duration 40. And in that in those 30 seconds, he's really weak. Like it changes the hero completely to have that have the spirit form. So I still wouldn't mind seeing him going eggs, but obviously the the heal aspect of it will be relatively oh. difficult to use, but as we talked about, Liquid could still use the timing, even against Night Stalker. Oh. I love how long the Illuminate time, like vision time, remains. GH threw that blast out and they still saw over towards Rosham. They'll smoke into the pit now. This was away from every bit of Radiant Vision, so this is a second Rosham that's going to go the way of Team Liquid. And they timed it right after Darkness. Yeah. This is 100% planned. And this is what I mean. This will happen again this game, that Night Stalker will use Darkness, Liquid will wait it out, and then they will hit this timing when they feel like they can do whatever they want because Darkness is on cooldown. That's why I still see the Axe being a good purchase. Matamba goes with a stun, finds Non Grata into that mid lane, and uh, GH is coming as quick as he possibly can. He's able to get the mana leak off, but Non Grata's got a mana pull enough to get him back to the tier 3 tower. And Prophet, you see no fear. You know how he wants to play this. You can take the tier 2 tower, but what's going to be the cost? If Klinks comes with him, Silent's going to rip apart that tier 3 tower on bottom lane. Should bring back Miracle with his Shadow Blade. They are not going to expect this one. No fear is relatively tanky with his... Uh... Yeah, first stun, Crest. still got Breathe Fire and no fear. Uh, push down and... Oh, he missed! Wait, he actually mischanced it? He missed. Oh boy. Miracle gets that kill if he swapped his Quelling Blade in instead of Stick when he went for the kill, but probably wasn't thinking about this possibility to even arise. Recall's being used. Silent's still on bottom lane, and now Prophet, he's gonna come straight back again. Actually, he's TPing up towards the top. This is just like non stop pressure on all fronts. And they've bought Silent a good amount of time. He has the BKB completed. He could hit the tier 3 Working tower. Hex, yep. Like, because DK already came back, you know he's not going to have a TP scroll, so Ursa and Wraith are the only ones that can come back and deal with Silent. He used to strafe to hit the creep wave, though. A bit yeah. surprised he didn't lay into that tower a bit. Why, yeah, why wouldn't you go for the guaranteed damage on a target that can't regenerate? It would have been pretty valuable. He would have got, like, a few hundred damage on that, at least. But, either way... Still a very close game, 
And it's the kind of game where just looking at gold as an indication of who's leading is a little bit tricky, because the lineups are so fundamentally different in how they use gold. Liquid wants to group up in five-man when they can, but in skirmishes, if Windstrike get the right skirmishes where they split Liquid's team up, they can be even 10k gold behind and win fights simply by being more mobile with Clink's Night Stalker as well as the Nature's Prophet TP. That's where Coddle is the absolute key piece here for Team Liquid to, to have in the right position and make sure they can match the numbers. It's smoke gang time. Everyone's together. Prophet's going to TP in, forcing the top, but Dire Scan from Liquid right on the money. Pings positive multiple times as Windstrike go through it. And that's why Matumba and Mind Controller are sitting where they're sitting underneath the sentry wall. They try and kill off Silent. Warren Hammer, the stun with the Wrath of Nature. Matumba takes a lot of damage as Vegetable Spirit. She was the one trying to provide that control, but dies quickly. They want more. Blink off cooldown in two seconds time for Matumba. I'll even give him the chakra, but everyone is gone. Windstrike, but they just go into the trees, ready for their TPs out. And Prophet's on bottom lane! Welcome to the split push, once again continuing. Now, even though they died on Venge, they do get the tower. It does get denied by Kuro, but it's another opening into the map for Nature's Prophet to work with. Mid lane. I Icebug's loving this. I don't think he's loving the unit he just imprisoned. But then support! Hit from behind! Oh, Silent with the double damage room, but the Bash is there in control! Silent, they forced up him up! But Miracle will still find the hit in. Kuro chasing down after Non Grata. Mind control, thought he went into the tree lines. Won't happen. Penitence as Non Grata goes through the small alley. But Matumba and Miracle, they're focusing on a bigger target. They want to go down through the middle. Remember, Miracle still got the Aegis of the Immortal. They're looking to fight, and that's 30 seconds without the two big callers from Windstrike alive. Prophet's trying to cut the creep wave. He needs to slow this down. He managed. In fact, yeah, Nightstalker already did it. He'll grab the second creep wave, and there goes the push. Man, if Iceberg, if he doesn't get bashed right there and then, he blows up minimum one hero with the Sanity's Eclipse and might even stay alive. It's so important for Liquid to connect that bash from Ursa in that moment out of the Dragon Knight stun. And that was such a, it was a really quick play. Liquid were very fast at going for that tiny moment of opportunity. And the Marginal's just favoring them there. Sound was one hit away from killing the Dragon Knight and probably staying alive. Mm -hmm. But Kuro with the heal, everything nicely timed there. Yeah, you can't really blame Windstrike for it. The only thing that felt odd was the fact they had to run up the river silent. Oh, that's an observer ward being planted. Now the sentry comes down. So they'll see silent for just a quick moment. Keeper of the light. Wants to bring friends in. But all his friends are already there. So got another three minutes ish until Roshan's gonna spawn up. Which means now miracle. Sorry to say, man. Time's out. Ooh, Dagger Coddle. I like this. Dagger? Yeah, it's a really good item on that hero. You're looking for him just to play around in the tree lines? It's... It, uh, it gives Coddle some interesting options because usually the limiting factor for the hero in fights is to get out of position when you go for the aggressive plays, such as casting Mana Leak or casting the Blinding Light. When you have a dagger, you can walk in and blink out, or you can blink in, cast Blinding Light, and force staff away. So you can kind of... Hit all of Coddle's spells are really good, right? It's just about landing them in fights that can be tricky. And this way he has a solution for Night Stalker running at him too. If he sees him coming, he can blink away in time and reset his position. It's a great item. GH has got this multiple times before, generally after Axe. But in this case, he seems to completely be bypassing it still. Not interested in getting it. He's actually out leveling the Wraith King. Interesting. Well, he's spending more time just on the on the defense against like big waves. But uh wind strike. But now they still have most of the creep waves pushing over. The bottom is a problem for them, and Mind Control and Kuro are kind of banking on Windstrike coming closer to do something about it. They get the scan, they know that someone's holding him behind. Originally it was Prophet, now it's no Nograda. But I, I highly doubt Windstrike are actually even feeling the pressure. What's Ice? Did Iceberg just PKB again? No. He, he moved the slot. He moved it. It was it was sitting in a different slot. He moved it and then and then tapped it. He's down to seven seconds on that BKB, two of the times it was ever used. 
curse these fat <laughs> fingers. <laughs> He's a big boy, but I wouldn't say fat. This is... He's lost two BKB charges. He's down to seven seconds now. This is really unfortunate, actually. And one thing is what happened to his item. The other part is the mental game. Like, you get frustrated, man. That sucks. <laughs> Well, they'll have to try and fight now. Iceberg still isn't at the BKB up for 20 seconds, so they cannot fight. Miracle gets revealed up on top, but remember, you've got Keeper of the Light. You can just drag him back in again. But that's what No Fear is waiting for. You know, sitting in behind the tower, left an Observe Ward behind. Kuro has no reveal on him, so Silence should be feeling okay where he is. But I'm waiting for these Courier Snipes to also come. The Observe Ward will see this. Silent might find a Koro snack here. Mmm, oh. yummy. Oh, just kidding. Go, Scepter. No fears nearby. They sprout, so they have the extra vision. Koro's trying to be pulled back, but the damage comes in. So the recall from GH will never finish. And Koro will lose part of his army. Not the whole thing, though. That saves some of it. Saves the troll and the centaur. But still, Koro is probably willing to take this death. You look at the map and what Liquid have managed to accomplish. They have good map, map control in the Dire. Or in the Radiant Jungle, they have good wards out. They have good push on top. They pushed across the river in mid. Oh, they won't want to accept this one. Matubberman goes down. That's the level 2 reincarnation. So it's still a 2-minute cooldown timer. That shows the power of the Clinks. And he hits pretty hard. Yeah. It's going to be even better once he has the Scythe of Ice. Then that Disable is going to last. And Wraith King just can't really deal with this Clanks because you just strafe and hit him and he can't stun you. You're gonna dodge that Wraithfire Blast, so... Looking Not for possible. a target. Smoke. Oh, Get yeah, a break. On MC. Mind Control walking directly over, but Mind Control so quick on the blink. He actually jumps up. They're gonna use the Chen Crew to allow him to fight. Vengeful Spirit throws himself in the line of fire and everyone else has arrived on top of the shrine. The TP's in from Team Liquid. They're focusing down onto Iceberg. Hey, at least his BKB is up and running. Nice Orca pushed back up in with the Mana Leak. Cannot outrun this over the hill. Doesn't get far away. Mind Control's Blink is already back off cooldown. Windstriker probably counting their lucky stars. It was only their Night Stalker and their VS to die. They got themselves into a really awkward spot there and that's <laughs> This Iceberg BKB is quite a... It's like a side plot in this game. Like the big overarching thing that's happening in the game, and then there's Iceberg's inner struggle <laughs> against BKB. He does get it off this time, but he didn't get it off before the first stun. So, like, the, th this fight is ends up being really awkward. Like you said, they also both banished and swapped the, uh, the opening jump, so yep. they overlap their spells, and it makes it a lot harder. Just gotta be that little bit extra crisp, and now... Now comes the high ground push, Liquid have their timing. They know darkness was used, so 50 seconds with a really weak Night Stalker. And fortification will probably slow them down. Blinding line, Mind Control wasn't really ready for that. In fact, he wanted to try and fight. Has to march on his cheat, always want to fly. Swaps him in, Mind Control disperses the BKB, and then kills off, always want to fly. Down without buyback available. Miracle will slow him up. The banishment is there. Remember, the sidelines are still pushing in. That's the way Windstrike anticipated this, so Liquid will feel that pressure and will have to go back. Once again, going high ground feels like it will come at such a high cost. They got some damage in, got a Venge kill, but yeah, that wasn't that wasn't really the biggest gain ever for Liquid. I love the attack from Miracle. This is a big gain, though. I don't know if they can actually take Roshan. That's a shard on this, too. Radiant is scanning, and I think it actually pinged out. Okay, well, <laughs> wind strike. Yeah, 33. 33-12, Roshan. Yeah, he should be up by now, boys, but uh, let me tell you, he's gone. Uh... You're right, but what are you going to do about it? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Extra ulti for Wraith King seems to be the choice for Liquid right now. Oh, they no put fear. the shard on Wraith King. Does he really want to complete that TP? He has to force stuff. Hides himself inside the Sprout. Miracle has no way to cut through it. Miracle, however, does have, have great damage when he's in Frost Dragon, having that Daedalus now up. Silent really thinking about this? Nope. He really isn't thinking about anything. <laughs> you give him too little credit. <laughs> it's zero brain activity. <laughs> Always gonna fly us on the run. Oh, this could be interesting though. If they see the recall and they stop him at oh this this is trouble. He has to BKB. Sprout. 
Yeah, Miracle trying to get out of here. In fact, he's just battling up against Non Grado, who can tank through a lot of this, and they brought the dust available. GH, how quick did he come? Bringing in the friends, you had the Lotus Orb protecting, but not enough. And the Clinks, mind control. Comes in with the Abyssal Blade, catching Silent by surprise. So what I thought was the plan there from Windstrike that I would have really liked was I thought they were going to start a fight on the opposite side of the map and Liquid will rely on recalling the Dragon Knight in. So if they could have started that fight and Clinks just hits the Dragon Knight once and then TPs away. Oh, iceberg! Going in with always want to fly, but the bash is from mind control. The swap up, then he has to defensively imprison Prophet wants to come and join this fight. I don't think he actually really wants to. That Chen army is already there to give the control. Kura will lose his life for it. Diaz has to buy him back, and no fear. Four stomp into the TP out. GH can't four stomp the right direction. The mind control's blink was on cooldown. Time is being wasted. The up on top lane, not by Miracle. Attacking to the tier 3 tower. The damage output is ridiculously good. Around 300, not including crit. And then now beats in towards the buildings. Always want to fly, has no swap available. And Klinks doesn't really feel like he's got the distance yet. Oh wow, he actually found another one. He found no fear. Sure. Bottom lane, why not? But the top lane is where it's all about. Miracle is just ripping through wind strike. They just don't have the power to withstand this. As in they go, Mind Control pushing Silent back out again. That's the game. GG, well played. Team Liquid will follow in the footsteps of EG and 2 0 wind strike. Radiance middle is under attack. Victory. That was a much better game. And it definitely felt like a game that. Windstrike were in range of. Yeah. Which is refreshing to see because they've had a couple of pretty crushing losses. Um, but this one, they played more aggressive. They drafted better lanes. Yeah. Um, it's just, they got outclassed when it came to the macro movements on, on the map. Like, they did a good job at split pushing with the nature.